We are going to start with the Gold Coast Suns, who obviously were handed a 108-point shellacking by the Giants in front of three and a half fans at Spotless Stadium. The say official that, number. Say that again. The official number was seven thousand one hundred and thirty-one. I I would like to know who counted that because I don't agree. But <laughs> fair enough. And that comes the week after I they it was got. Laurie Kappa and the meter maids. <laughs> It was the week <laughs> after they got smashed by the Cats by 85 points. The last two weeks, bring it back, the last two weeks, they have scored 62 points and conceded 255 points. Good in, on them. That's I mean, two <laughs> weeks. That's a, two that's a new record, isn't it? That's, that's Melbourne level from the Mark Neal days. That What's is... Some, Atrocious. For some more records, in their last three games, fourth quarters, they've combined to score two points in three fourth quarters in a row. They are the only team since the stat was first recorded in, I believe it was, 90 years. So when stats started being recorded in 1999, they became the first side to record zero marks inside 50 for an entire game. An entire game. Zero. You know what's interesting? Oh, my. Two meter Pete is playing in the in the Neifel. Neifel. and Jared Lyons, Lyons playing the Neifel. Barlow was playing the Neifel before he he broke his jaw. I'm pretty sure, but he was playing the Neifel as well. So they have guys, but apparently Lyons is too slow. That's apparently what it is. But when you're losing by 108 points, like, doesn't matter how slow they are. Get matter? him in. <laughs> exactly. He was uh, he was nearly averaging 30 touches earlier. Like I don't understand it, but anyway. Let's so what we're going to do is we're try and fix them. We're going to be the the committee. The committee. Which, was it in Matthew Lloyd's article on the weekend? Yeah, well, Lloyd, he spoke about it on SEN. It should be as well. a committee to fix up the Gold Coast to fix Suns. Them up. So we are the committee. But where do you even begin? That's that's the whole issue. We begin issue. from the beginning. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's set the scene of where, obviously, this club, let's go back to 2014. So this club, round 16, 2014, they versed Collingwood. That game they ended up winning, and they were 9 and 6 after it, and they were in touch with the finals. That was also the game that Gary Abler injured his shoulder. After that game, they lost six of their next seven. They missed the eight by two games. Since then, after that season, Ablett played just 34 of the next 66 games. He obviously then left, and they have not won more than six matches in a season. This is a team that was pegged when it was introduced back in 2011, that it was four or five years before they were going to be contending for a flag, if not winning a flag. This is now we're up to their eighth season. We've gone through three coaches in that time frame, and the future has never looked as bleak as it is right now. So it's Brett McCaffrey's fault. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, that is that is the um, the event that that sparked the whole debacle. Ben. I was waiting for you to say that. Like I was literally sitting here thinking, how long is it going to take for you to say that? <laughs> but it, you go even further back than that. Go back to the first draft that they had. Yeah, and that's where the, the problems begin because. They recruited pick one, David Swallow. You could say he's probably the only one left who's developed into a genuine talent. Pick two, Harley Bennell. Gone. Gone. Pick three, Sam Day. Never Never lived developed up. into it. Obviously, he's had injuries as well. Pick seven, Josh Caddy. Gone. Gone. <laughs> pick nine, Dion Prestia. Gone. Pick 10, Daniel Gorringe. Nothing. Pick 11, Rhymes Tom Lynch. Orange. Likely to probably be gone. Probably gone. Pick 13, Seb Tape. Nothing. O'Meara, that's gone. Their, that's all their picks inside the top 20 in their first draft. Dixon, gone. Yeah, Dixon was one of their original players. Yeah. So much talent has walked out of that club, which has been one of the main things. But can you blame them? Because when the biggest problem with this club was when they set it up, they rushed it. They rushed the whole process. They, they spent rushed, the yeah. first couple of years training with like facilities that were a joke. Like out yeah. of a port nearly, they were that poor. They rushed the Gold Coast Suns. But they took their time with the GWS Giants. Yeah, and look at the difference. Because they had not only one draft, they had the the next three to four drafts, which they were picking yeah. up all these young players. And even their recruiting was better. Because Way better. Gold Coast went for Gary Ablett. And Nathan, Bock, Nathan Bock, all these and guys. Jared Brennan, Jared Harbrow. Yeah. He's been all right, Jared Harbrow. But GWS went for Callum Ward, Phil Davis, all these guys. Tom so, Scully. Yeah, exactly. They've certainly done a much better job of it. The the issues in terms of on the field, they're massive, but 
this is not a new problem. Creating a sports franchise in the Gold Coast is borderline mission impossible. Yeah, it was a waste. It yeah. doesn't work. There's, stats prove it doesn't work. Well, there's yeah, only two successful ones right now. Them and, well, successful as in they're not dead no, they're yet. not successful. Yeah, but success on the Gold Coast for a sports club is a relative term. They're not dead, which is the Titans and the Suns. And, and the problem is because there's so many other things to do on the Gold Coast. It's a tourist Why place. would you? Yeah, exactly. It's, like, it's the Las Vegas of yeah. Australia. The, do you the see population an, is a tourist yeah. and people who live Older. in, uh, I think it was on the ABS website, people who live... Did you go to the statistics? I did go <laughs> to the, the statistics. The population that demographic? Well, the population, mm. half of them, 50%, that is... <laughs> Lived, Thanks for lived that. Somewhere. In case we weren't sure what yeah. half was. Well, half of them <laughs> lived somewhere else five years earlier. Yeah. So they're, if they're from Melbourne they or Adelaide, they've, they've already yeah. got a, a team that they support. Yeah. And I read an article, it was uh, published in the New Daily in 2015. Um, it was Michael Prane's article. He he interviewed uh, Gold Coast, veteran Gold Coast publisher Pat McLeod. And he said... Do you go to a Titans game? So this is the Gold Coast Titans. Do you go to a Titans game at 3 p.m. on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon when it's brilliant sunshine and you've got the world's most popular beaches on on your doorstep? Yeah. What's the point of going to a game? And these teams aren't developing. If they started off well, say that they did what the... the, What's that? The, The hockey team in Las Vegas, the one that made the finals... The Vegas Golden Knights. Yeah, the Vegas Golden Knights. They made the finals in their first year. If they made the finals early on, they would have got a fan base. Well, success is how you build a fan base. It's why the Lions, while they're still struggling now, they still do have a supporter base because of those three years of dominance where they they kind of entrenched a fan base that has those memories and is not going to forget them. Same as the West Coast Eagles. They yeah. had success early on. Fremantle Dockers struggled early on. Yeah. They've got a big fan base now, Fremantle, but they struggled in their first 10 years. Yeah, exactly. And on the field, obviously, they're the only the only time they've broke, broken the 100-point barrier this year was against Carlton. They averaged just 61 points per contest, which they're the only team not to crack 700 points for the season yet. They're just abysmal. If you watch that game, it's a training drill. Obviously, they, the first 10 or 11 rounds, they didn't have their home game because of the commonwealth games but then they came home against geelong for their first home game look guys we're home let's get pumped by 85 points and not even try but their home ground is not really an advantage is it no so there's there's so many issues on the field as well as translating off the field they got the lowest membership numbers in the afl this is a franchise that has now had upwards of 200 million dollars poured into it by the afl the question is, a lot of people will say they need more, they need priority picks, they need more, they need more money in the salary cap. Is a club's going to agree to do that? Because they already agreed to do it. Those those picks you read out from their first year, how many of those were in the top 10? That was at least like five or six that they got in the top 10 that year. So clubs that were down the bottom six. then, six. Six in the top 10. Yeah, that's do unfair. You, yeah, Eight in exactly. the top 20. And a club's down the bottom now. Look at St Kilda, Brisbane and Carlton, who are the three who are below them on the ladder. Do you think they're really going to agree or going to be happy with the fact that, oh, yeah, you guys are actually technically doing worse for us, win-loss, but because we need this one to go well, they're going to have another three picks in the top 15. If I was one of those fans or part of the the clubs that are lower than them or struggling, I'd be filthy at that. I'd be pretty filthy too, but you also have to think about the why so many players have left. Culture. culture. Exactly. So it all comes down to culture. And if they're not looking to change that, getting all the draft picks Isn't in the world help. is not going to change a single thing. It's going to be the same thing over and over and over again. But so is that's culture, what they need to address. Is their culture affected by the culture of the Gold Coast area? More the than likely. Culture. Mm. More than likely. But, I mean... The AFL knew what they were getting into, so it's, it's on them. I mean, yeah. it's no surprise what the Gold Coast brings. And like we, like you guys said, it's not a sporting capital no. as seen. 
Well, there's literally two who are still running, and there's so many who have tried basketball, hockey. There is so many who have tried and just completely failed because you can't build a fan base there. And the thing that's so no- annoying about it is that they carry on. Tasmania has been crying out for a team for so long, and they carry on saying that this is not a sustainable model. There's never going to be financial. They're never going to come out in the green financially. This team wouldn't work. Can you please tell me how Gold Coast is coming out on the green? They poured two hundred million dollars into that franchise, and they get ten thousand people showing up for every game, and nobody gives a stuff. Because the Gold Coast population is going to grow in twenty years' time. Right now, it's sitting just over five hundred thousand. In twenty years' time, it's going to be this over. Did you get that 000. from the ABS? <laughs> yes, I did get that from the ABS. It's growing to. 820,000 Yeah, but if in none of them time. care about it, who cares? Well, if they grow up with the Gold Coast Suns, they're going to start supporting the Gold Coast Suns. But didn't you say that no one stays there for longer than... Or, like, people that no, have No, but kids that there. are born in, in the Gold Coast, on the Gold Coast will support the Gold Coast Suns. So you reckon like, in 20 years they may have a supporter base? If they have success in that 20 years... The yeah. AFL can't yes. wait 20 AFL years, AFL won't be... Oh, they have to. It's the only way... Well, what way else can they, they do? They were told when they were making these... Um, franchises that they would have to wait 30 years to see the fruitation of it. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's the waiting they're game. They're not going to go to Tasmania. There's no chance. They should go to Tasmania. Yeah, but they're not going Morally, to. Morally, they should be going to Tasmania because Tasmania is such a footy... Obsessed state. Obsessed state. But they won't. Because but the AFL won't admit they're wrong either. Let's be honest. Yeah, um, How embarrassing is issue. that if they're wrong? Yeah, well, they're not going to admit it because they're the AFL. Tony... Tony Cochran yeah. was on Jared Waitley's show on SEN yesterday, and he was saying that they need more money. They do have the money; they've used the money, but they need more to develop their yeah. their funding. They need they need money for their academy. They had to close some of their academy down because they don't have enough money to fund it. I think that is the the go to option, not the picks, because I think that's unfair. But more allowances in their player development but and their coach development salaries. He said that he has some ideas of how to improve the teams that are on the bottom. In the a- in Victoria as well, including Carlton and St Kilda, because he said that you don't want the you don't want the sport to be like the Premier League, and no. you have the same five teams exactly fighting for the title. So, so how what was his suggestions? He didn't say. Oh, he well, said that's that their, their ideas. <laughs> Thanks for that. He said that he doesn't have two hours. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. Discuss well, fair it, enough. But there's some ideas there to help those teams that are low on the ladder as well. One of the ideas, whether you like it or not, your opinion. The idea that after the first round of picks, teams that have been out of the finals for a set amount of years, let's say it's five years, three years, whatever they make their cutoff, get an extra pick at the end of the first round. So say if you finish last and you have been out of the finals for six years, so you're over the over the limit, you would get the first pick, you'd then get the 19th pick and then your second round pick. So it'd be two or three teams who get like the 19th, 20 and the 21. It means they can use it to move it for an experienced player like a Jared Lyons, yeah, but something like that. even if they like get that. these picks in, it doesn't mean they're no, going I know, to be successful. What I would do would be stop free agents from going to teams in the top eight. How do you do that? Well, that's not fair on the it's players. It's not free agency anymore. Then. But that's how they do it in the NFL. But it's not the NFL. But, but we you've, want to be opened, the NFL. you've opened the can of worms with free agency. You mm. can't then go, you can go to that one, right that, that one, the, and that one, but you can't right go that to that Is it right that the players one. from the teams in the bottom half of the table always go to the teams in the top half? Well, the thing is they want success. Every AFL yeah. player wants success. Well, they success. can get success if they go to one of those teams in the lower half. But they're not going to get more it than immediately. One, more it depends than one player, how old they are as well. More than one player goes to one of those teams. But tell me this then. If Tom Lynch is thinking about moving back to Victoria... Is he going to pick for his success-wise? Let's just say these are complete hypotheticals. One of them is interested. I don't know about the other one. But is if he would pick between Richmond or St Kilda, why would he pick St Kilda? If St Kilda one reason, told him their plans of recruiting other players... What difference is it going to make if that... It's, you can't, like... There's no way he's going to pick well, St Kilda. Do you think LeBron James would have gone to the Miami Heat if, if the other players weren't going yeah, there like Chris Bosh? Cons- div- there's five people on the court. There's 18 for AFL. North Melbourne difference. recruited players in the 70s by doing that. It the free agency, the first time there was free agency when players could leave after yeah. 10 years. Well, if they, they could get a combination, but those teams generally teams can't. St. Kilda, could, St. Kilda couldn't even get, they couldn't get Dusty, they couldn't well, get Kelly. Well, if you Kelly. shut down free agency to the teams in the top eight, then they will be getting those players. But then people won't want to leave. 
Like, is that what well, you're saying? Well, that's how it should you, be because free they, agency, they should just stay to their stay with their club and not be able to free agency net right transition now, throughout. The there club. is too much power to the players. That's why it's called free, though. But that's why these Gold Coast, the Gold Coast Suns, are struggling because the players are leaving. If they could keep hold of the players... Think about it, though. Just think about it. Tom Lynch right now can't leave. He's still there. If you watch his game on the weekend, he couldn't care less. He, he does there was, not want to be there. He doesn't want to be there, him, and he's not two playing. Peter Black back in. So if, if you drop Peter him then, and then, then he falls out of the league, then the league loses and the club loses, so nobody wins. That is, exactly. Well, that's his fault, isn't it? If he doesn't yeah, but that play doesn't the help the Suns. club, does he? If a, if a player doesn't want to play there, and they've got their mind made up, right... Then they're not going to be a plus for that team. It's better to try and move them. Yeah, use them Free as agency. currency. So it doesn't matter if they drop him. But if they still match the Tom Lynch, amount. then they're going to have to. Then they'll get a trade out of it. So there's still. I wouldn't play him then. If he doesn't want to play there, you put Peter right in. Two meter Peter's the answer. He wants to stay there. He signed yeah, well, a new contract. Yep. Yeah. It's a very contentious one, as you can tell. It's a bit <laughs> but, <laughs> no, it's good. It's good debate. And the thing is that it comes down to how much they are giving this club, while other clubs that are struggling are kind of having to fend for themselves because they've got a set up supporter base, and this is a club that the AFL needs to succeed. Which other clubs are struggling? Think Carlton, yeah, Brisbane, St Kilda. But you look at Carlton though, and there's not that like people are saying like. There's a lot more hope with Carlton. Yeah, well, the you thing can we, see more prospects. No, Carlton are struggling. Is Carlton's struggles is their own fault? Yeah, yeah. Well, they I'm don't deserve any that. help. But so they is Gold Coast. Work it out but so is Gold, Gold Coast, Coast. Is, co- is all culture related. Half their players don't want to be there. Do you blame them? But Gold Coast weren't the ones that got rid of Prestia and all those players. Carlton got rid of their good players, and that's why they're struggling. Yeah, that's it's different ways. But then go St Kilda, go Brisbane. St Kilda's struggling because of confidence. Their players had confidence; they would not be where they are. Brisbane, now. Brisbane are on the on the rise. So yeah. you can't say they're struggling right now. They're on the rise. They've been they're struggling. still struggling. They're They've still... got one win. Yeah, I yeah that's but they're struggling. That. But they're that's... on the rise. We see hope there. They're not a team in five. We we don't see a future for them in five years' time. We don't see a future for the Gold Coast Suns in five years' time. Well, the thing is, if some of their players, like if they get their best team in, they're all healthy and they want to win. There is a future. It's just that right now with injuries, players not wanting to be their form, it's not coming together. But Stuart Jews already said that when he got there at the first year, he didn't have time to do the cull he wanted to do. He said there is going to be a massive second cull. So I'd say a lot of those players are going to go. So they're going to be even worse. So where are they going they to get their be. players from? Who knows? I don't know. How are they going to develop those players? They're just going to throw money at them. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is the AFL solution to a lot have. of problems. Yeah, well, that is their solution. So it is a really contentious one, and we could argue about this <laughs> forever. But in the uh, absolute blockbuster coming up next week, we have Gold Coast versus St Kilda. So <laughs> St Kilda <laughs> might win a second game for I the year. I reckon it's going to be a draw. <laughs> Can you imagine? It Second would just draw be... of the year oh, to St Kilda. So if St Kilda play anything like last week, they'll have no chance. That was laughable. So we'll have to wait and see.